people first organizations will win in the future of work. Your only real asset is your people. We, we all, all want purpose to work. work. HR led organization is. I'm the sorry, but leaders don't lead empty desks and empty shop floors. Welcome to the People Strategy Leaders Show. I'm your host, Sri Chalapa, founder and president of Engagedly, and a serial entrepreneur in technology, films, and music. This is where we talk to people leaders, business strategists, and organizational savants about leading in the time of change. What is working, what is not working, and more importantly, what we should be thinking about. Stick around to the end of the show. We will reveal how you can be our next guest. And now, let's engage. Hello, this is Sri Chalapa again with People Strategy Leaders. I am today joined by Mercy Karuga of Pula based in, uh, in Kenya. And she's actually ha- happens to be one of Engage Lee's clients as well. So it is absolutely a pleasure to talk to her again today. Uh, Mercy is a talent management professional and psychologist. She's a people, culture, and wellness are her greatest passion. She values her ability to set up organization success, partnering with leadership to establish and continuously improve a thriving culture and employee experience. She derives her energy from helping people be the best version of themselves, seeing them thrive in their roles, meet their aspirations and enjoy their work where they spend most of their waking hours. Her experience has been centered on startups where she has built people and culture systems, processes, starting out as an engineering and finance management company, she moved to an African network of schools and she's currently working in a global insure tech company based in four continents, Africa, Latin America, Europe, and Asia. That's quite a bit of experience working in all these different countries in a hybrid environment. So it's, I'm, I'm really looking forward to having this discussion with you, Mercy, and uh, thanks for making time today. Thank you, Sri. So, you know, you work with all these different teams across mm-hmm. all the different time zones obviously you probably have a very long long days on some days i assume oh yes um uh, because we work in a hybrid environment and you know you have teammates sitting in different parts of the world there's no day that looks the same as the, the last one so we plan time around um uh, what um, is a priority for a given day which is different yeah yeah and and since you're passionate about driving engagement and mm-hmm. performance um i'm mm-hmm. assuming it's going to be a little bit harder since you can't really see them on a mm. in person uh since your teams are in so many different places um what are some of the things that you have done to really drive that high performance culture and and engagement that you have in your organization Good question. Um, So starting off with um, high performance, um, it all starts with getting the right fit for the roles that we have. Um, At Pula, we are daring to do things differently. And um, what we deliver on is, um, you know, we're setting the pace in in quite a lot of the markets that we get into. So our recruitment process um, is quite robust. And um, once we get the right fit in, Um, One of the key things that we do in the talent management space is to ensure that we are aligned uh, on the vision that we're working towards. And uh, we do this by having clarity on what is the focus areas when it comes to our objectives and key results. And then um, once we have locked that in, we're clear within the teams um, and um, in the organization departments and now individual individuals, we now get into um, aligning on a month to month basis. And how we do this is through our system, Engagedly. Um, so we track um, how we are uh, delivering on our on our goals on a month to month basis. And it drives the conversations that um, teammates have with their line managers. So you're also able to have early intervention measures. Um, you don't wait for, you know, when you're having the deep dive checkpoints on the media and end of year, but it's a continuous conversation and people have clarity. They get support from their line managers and there's also accountability. So are the line managers usually in the same country as their direct reports or line managers could be in a different country? Their reports could be in a different country. How does that structure work? It is spread across. Um, um, so depending on the team, we do have uh, teams that are global based and you could have managers sitting in different areas 
um, with their direct reports in different regions. But then we have um, our field operations teams, which are uh, basically uh, boots on the ground. So when it comes to teams that are driving the operations in a specific area, you'll find managers or the supervisors are within the same region. But for global teams, they're cut across the different uh, markets that we're in. So I assume it's going to be somewhat difficult of a challenge to understand exactly what's going on, which is why you need a system to really mm -hmm. operate and so that your CEO and your executives can have a view into uh, the alignment. Because uh, one of the big drivers that we often hear about and we read about based on the research is setting good expectations and then mm -hmm. having ongoing conversations. And, you know, those are two major things you need to do. Um, mm -hmm. And it's easy to forget people when they're not in your line of sight in your mm -hmm. office when you walk through the office. So I think mm -hmm. having a deliberate approach and having mm -hmm. a system to be able to do that uh, becomes extremely important, especially if you're distributed across different countries. So um, yeah. I'm assuming that is one of the reasons you've used Engagely, but also uh, your approach is more deliberate, right? So can you talk me through the, the how does your goal setting process actually work? You know, what has mm -hmm. been really working really well uh, over mm -hmm. the few years that you've been uh, on this uh, initiative? Yeah, so um, we have um, our, our goals, uh, or rather our performance management process starts off with goal setting. At the beginning of the year, once um, the senior management team has determined what the focus will be, we then now have um, the organizational goal set. And from there, um, the senior members of each team, the heads of department get to determine what will be their team's contribution to those um, organizational OKRs. And then from there, they, we now have line managers working with um, their direct reports and their teammates to determine what the individual OKRs will be. So once we've locked that in, we now have the month-on-month check-ins that we run on the system. And it's quite um, easy and quick because you're able to pull in um, the goals that you have set and have conversations around those same areas and you can be able to access what you had uh, feedback that you'd previously gotten. Um, so that happens on a month to month basis. Then um, we have the deep dive on um, the, at the media point. Um, why I, I, I love how we've set up our process is at the media point, we have uh, what we call the, uh, it's a three pronged process. So we look at not only the uh, contribution in terms of the OKRs, but also competencies. So you're a manager, how you meant to be showing up in terms of your capabilities and skills. So all this is already pulled into the system based on our competency matrix. Um, and it gets to uh, pull from based on the, the role that, that you're in. And then you also look at culture. So um, based on our values, how are you showing up, how, you, how are other people experiencing you? And um, we have these three key areas weighted in. So 70% is tied to your um, to your goals or to your OKRs, 20% um, competencies and 10% culture. Yeah, and then we have um, continue on once we wrap up with the media, we continue on with the monthly check-ins, uh, this accountability, we are looking at um, whether there's clarity on how we're tracking. Then we close out the year with the same um, process that we uh, ran at the media point. So we look at the three Cs and how we've uh, showed up from, on, on those three areas. Yeah. So one of the things that the system has been able to do for us is, um, and it's, it's a really interesting and exciting tool is the nine box. So it helps with su succession planning because you're able to see um, how, how um, the uh, different uh, team members that we have, um, how they're tracking in terms of their leadership potential and their performance. And you, you can be able to plan accordingly based on that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Because you you always wanna drive growth from within the organization that rather than mm -hmm. keep hiring new managers and new leaders um, is one of the you know best ways to retain employees is to provide them a career path and growth mm -hmm. uh, so i want to touch upon uh, you know your culture mentioned that you mentioned uh, mm -hmm. and i want to revisit the growth part uh, and that mm -hmm. and the succession plan part uh, mm -hmm. in a bit as well on the 
engagement and driving culture. What are some of the things that you're doing to drive culture? Because, you know, it's easy to get disconnected and disengaged mm. when you are remote and you're not seeing your team members because you're not building those really strong relationships, you know, but that you, you know, go out for coffee or lunch or, you know, have those sidebar conversations talking about sports, uh, things mm. of this nature. So what are you dri driving, doing to drive culture that is working for you in this distributed environment? Yeah, um, that's a good one as well. So I would say for culture, which is one of the things that I'm really passionate about, it all uh, starts with understanding how people are feeling, how they're experiencing each other, and how they're experiencing the general environment in the company. And one of the things that we've been able to do um, more so in the past year is roll out our pulse check survey um, that we uh, we, we roll out every um, half year to look at um, how are uh, people um, experiencing their work? Um, are they feeling recognized? Are they um, feeling their, their work is aligned to their career goals and, and plans? Um, are they able to um, leverage on their skills and knowledge? Um, how are they experiencing other teams? And also uh, when it comes to um, the NPS scores, like how, would, how likely are they to recommend um, our organization as a good place to work? Then from there, um, we are able to uh, determine what will be the focus point in terms right. of the engagement plan. So we look at it in a twofold way. We look at it at an org level. What do we need to improve overally? Then we break it down by department and get to look at um, also having in mind that this is an anonymous survey. So it's mainly about getting feedback and hearing um, what's experienced for each team because it's also always unique your one team can can have a different experience compared to the next one so we have conversations with uh, uh, different leaders of those teams but we also have a culture committee um, which has a, a representative from every department um, that goes beyond now the, the pulse checks once we've determined what the engagement plans are. We also have those um, constant conversations to see what um, can we can we improve on, how are uh, people feeling and uh, what do we need to put more focus and attention on. So I would say in terms of a systems perspective, the, you know, using Engagedly to build out the, the Pulse Check survey has been quite helpful because you'll find um, when you're talking about um, satisfaction or um, engagement, you usually have, uh, you know, just one main question on how would you recommend this as a place to work or not, but there's a lot more we can dig into that will give us more comprehensive information. Yeah, so it, it's been very instrumental in, um, you know, providing a, a guiding point on where to put more uh, weight and focus on. And also to look at, you know, we started off the year at this point. Now we're at this point, we're growing in this area. We need to put uh, more focus on this area to get to a better place. Yeah. So as you have done these pulse surveys to get a gauge on people's sentiment, where they feel like they could use more, um, you know, impact from the organization. What are some of the things that you've done based on the survey that have really improved your culture and engagement? Yeah, so what comes to mind is actually on work recognition. Um, you know, being in a startup space or a scale up space, um, things move quite fast and, and you might find yourself not taking time to pause to celebrate the wins, whether they're big or small. Um, so one of the things that we have done is utilize the kudos wall on Engagedly. Um, and it's, um, you know, to drive a bit more traffic there, we have kudos Thursdays where we get to celebrate, um, you know, uh, teammates who've um, showed up well within the week. Um, and we pull this from um, the social world on, on Engagedly. So we've seen, you know, building a habit around that has, um, uh, created the space where people also pause to recognize, you know, Srikant did this and um, I, I need to celebrate him for that or recognize um, someone for something they did in an exemplary way. Um, and aside from that, we also look at, you know, being remote based 
um, the, the teammates who've never seen each other, given that they sit in different regions. And these are some of the things that we picked. And, um, you know, we planned for uh, an org wide retreat um, earlier in Q1, where we brought everyone um, from all the four different continents together and they were able to connect, they were able to bond, and it was quite an exciting time. So I would say these data points have proved um, quite helpful to see. Um, um, how can we, what, what initiatives can we run that can make, um, make the experience better? That's, that's awesome. Yeah, even the fact that you brought, brought them together, you know, maybe once a year or when, whatever your frequency is, getting to see them face to face, because sometimes you do want to see that and mm -hmm. see the person, you know, and not always be virtual, because um, yeah. it's, it's definitely more real to do that. Um, mm -hmm. So what are some of the initiatives that you have taken that have worked really well for the career development so let's say you do the nine box and you identify people who are ready to move further up their career or maybe move to a different role maybe it could be a lateral move it doesn't have to always be up right because maybe somebody wants to move from marketing to product or maybe somebody wants to move from product to sales or whatever whatever that is right or or going up like what are some of the initiatives that you do based on your nine box uh, and other type of um, you know data points that you get for employee development and growth yeah so one of the things that um you know came to a realization came to a realization um last year was sometimes you know you, you have great individual contributors um, and you know they're um, having uh, distinguished performance um, throughout, and uh, you promote them into a role, but you not equip them to to get yes. um, you know to manage a team. Yes. So one of the things that we did is um, roll out a leadership academy. Um, we used uh, um, it, it. It was an interesting time where we rolled it out with a, a, a cohort of one of the some of the managers within within Pula where they got an experiential um, training on how to lead themselves, lead their teams, and also lead the business. So this has um, now become part of what we want to continually do to equip our leaders to be better at um, leading themselves, leading their teams, and also um, you know, leveraging on, on how to lead the business uh, better and also prepare for the future. Um, so we're also looking at beyond that, what can we do also for emerging leaders? So you're on track to, you know, get into a role that would require you to be, to, to a function beyond an individual contributor. How can we already start instilling those skills that would get you to, to a better uh, place in terms of your leadership? So what does the Leadership Academy look like? Is it like a online training? And you mentioned experiential learning here as well, which I'm really one of the big fans of that because you can only read mm -hmm. so much from books. And I always say you can't, uh, you know, watch a video on, on riding a bike and then expect to ride a bike. You have to ride the bike, you know, yes. like even if you are, if you're, even if you're using training wheels to begin with, mm -hmm. but you cannot ride a bike from watching a book, uh, watching a movie. Mm -hmm. So, uh, talk to me about how what exactly does that entail so it's actually a six months program um so one of the things that we were keen um in looking for is um, sometimes you get you know facilitators and they take um teammates through two three days or one week of a workshop and by the time you know they get to the door the information that you've received has already disappeared. So this academy um, runs for six months, actually run by one of the consultants in Kenya. Um, but what happens there is you go through psychometrics, you get self-awareness um, through um, psychometrics that are run. You also um, get to walk through 360 where you get feedback from internal and external clients. And then there's also coaching that is um, part of that the program. And they're also now in person modules where you also get to work in project teams and understand um, some of the um, 
some of the tools that you can use to to be better so one of the things that um, was really um, phenomenal for for the team that went through the the leadership academy is to realize you know i'm in team x and you are in team y and perhaps sometimes there are a bit of challenges here but you know understanding each other's processes and and how you function brought a lot of understanding it's always said understanding breeds tolerance. And by the time we're getting to the end of the academy, we realized uh, we could see um, already some improvements in how people, the mindset that you have towards other teams and um, how to collaborate better. Because now I understand um, your process impacts uh, my process in this way. And um, if, if, I, if I don't plug in in this way, it will have um, an impact on your end. So um, it, it had a couple of modules attached to it, but there are also activities in and in 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 between, and um, coaching was also part of it. So you you cannot really be able to build your skills if you don't have you know self awareness on where the gaps are. So that that was a starting point before we could get on building um, onto. Um, skills that would help you become a better leader that's that's absolutely great i mean i i actually see that problem a lot where people get promoted to management just because they're a great yeah. performer um yeah. and a great individual does not translate to a great manager because the yeah. skill sets are so different you know one skill set is really about the work itself the other skill set is about people and managing mm -hmm. and driving results through people through people it's not you anymore mm -hmm. it's through your people right mm -hmm. um and then i've seen issues where what ends up happening is the individual contributor sometimes gets um it does not happy with the work that people are doing so they start doing themselves so then <laughs> then and, and, the, and then the other people under the team are not getting that coaching and development for so that they can get better mm -hmm. and actually start delivering and use that you know, in leadership to leverage, you know, use that leverage to do more with it as a team rather than trying to do everything yourself because mm -hmm. you're not able to get that from the people and you're not you're not happy with that. And I think that's where mm -hmm. the transition needs to happen from being mm -hmm. an contributor to being a good manager. Yeah, that's true. And you find we assume a lot, um, you know, just because you've been able to deliver by yourself that, uh, you know, you'll be able to deliver through your team. But if we don't equip you with the right tools to be able to do that, and it's a skill in itself, and it also requires a lot of intention to coach and to develop, um, you will not be really setting you up for success. And that's why sometimes you find um, someone who was a great star, uh, being an individual contributor, you give them a team and um, performance starts uh, going a bit down. Yes, yes, absolutely. So we're going to talk, we're going to talk about some of the pitfalls and some of the wrong uh, or incorrect things that you've seen other HR leaders or leadership do in other organizations or in your experience in the past. Um, can you talk to me about two or three things that that people are doing incorrectly or not doing that can make a huge impact? Um, I'd say um, one of the things that I think, um, you know, in the talent space that we need to give more attention to is wellness. Um, because we, you know, with my background in psychology and now also getting into HR, we spend most of our waking hours at work. Um, and if we're not taking care, if we're not um, helping people show up with their full selves, then it, it also has an impact in the long run. So looking at the different dimensions of wellness, and it's really um, the responsibility of you know, the talent management team in whichever company someone is in to push for these initiatives because you're basically meant to take care of not only you know, results in terms of performance, but also the person who's pushing for the results. So is it things like financial wellness? Is it mental wellness? emotional, physical, all those things. And you can always even leverage um, our providers, um, the ones we use for medical or other things to plug in because they have these resources available, but it's just um, spending a bit of time to plan around programs that would help create awareness and also help people uh, figure out where do I get these resources um, to just uh, take care of all the wellness dimensions in my life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, wellness is so important, um, but you know, because they could be, it may not be work related at all. It may be they, they're going through some own personal challenges at their home, 
or with their family or whatever that is. And, um, and if they are not feeling psychologically safe in the environment, mm -hmm. they will be, you know, bottling that up and not expressing it to their manager or to their other leadership or pe people who can ha have an understanding, you know, you cannot, you know, e even a, the best tennis player does not always win every day, right? They That's have true. bad days and they have good mm -hmm. days. And we yeah. need to understand that you you have to acknowledge that and be able to mm. be openly express that. Hey, today I just don't feel it. I mean, I'm I'm mm. having issues with my you know fa family, or I have problems in you know going on that I need to take care of. Yeah, and you said something quite um, important, and it's up to us as line managers to also create that a space for psychological safety. Um, and it starts with small things, like how do you conduct your check-ins? You know, do you just go straight into business or do you take time to find out how the person is doing? If it's the beginning of the week, how was the weekend? Um, if you're seeing any changes, you know, not being quick to 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 um, ask for um, what was regarded, but finding out if there's something that's going on that's um, deeper. Um, specifically, if you know someone is has been doing quite well and all of a sudden their performance is going down, um, it's also time to. Uh, it's also an opportunity to have a conversation around: is there is there something that's going on that um, we'd like support with? But if we don't create that um, space, um, we don't hold that space for 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 having safe conversations or um, you know being fully present, then it also becomes a challenge for people to, to um, plug in and, and um, you know, take care of their, of their wellness. It, it, it begins with us. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. All right, well, we're almost out of time, so I have a couple of quick questions uh, and then mm -hmm. we'll wrap up. So mm -hmm. as you're looking forward, you know, obviously you're looking, okay, what are the, some of the next things you wanna do in the organization? Um, and I, I don't know if, if those in things involve engagedly or not, but it'd be, you know, have, I'd, be, I'd be interested to hear that as well. What are you looking in as you're going into the second half of the year and early next year, some of the initiatives that you have going on? Um, it's uh, basically around the things that we've talked about um, on ensuring that, you know, we are giving the right kind of support for people to do their best work. Um, and that is based on um, how are we are we keeping each other accountable on our goals, and that's tied to, to performance and doing the monthly check-ins. It's also on uh, creating um, a space for or an opportunity for for growth. So looking at what are the gaps and where can we fill this in? Is it through training? Is, is it through creating um, you know uh, uh, leadership academies where people can journey through? And also um, just um, looking at um, the pulse check, we actually just concluded our media uh, pulse check um, survey and um, we're getting into unpacking the results and looking at what engagement plans can we focus on in, in the rest of the year. Yeah, so just taking care of, of our team um, and helping people be the best as they do what um, they're best at. Excellent. Well, Mercy, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. I appreciate you as our uh, in a valued partner. Um, and thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and experiences. And, you know, I think uh, a, people, a lot of people can learn from this to see how they can manage their teams better. Because it's not always about talking about goals and getting mm -hmm. work done, but it's also about career growth and development. And it's also about building a strong culture and especially mm -hmm. a culture of psychological safety because without that, you're not gonna get the performance. And I mm -hmm. applaud you for, for driving a more holistic approach to talent management uh, in your organization. Um, well, thank you very much for being on the show. Where can people read about you and learn more about what you do? Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Okay, yes. excellent. Um, and Mercy Karuga uh, on LinkedIn, with Pula.io, which is a fintech company. Uh, everyone, in case you want to reach reach out to Mercy, Mercy and learn more. Well, thank you, Mercy. Thank you so much. Been a pleasure. Thank you as well. Thank you as well. I've enjoyed the session. Sri Chalapa here. Thank you so much for listening to the People Strategy Leaders Podcast. If you are a successful leader, 
or a people strategist who would like to be on this program, please visit engagedly.com slash people strategy leaders podcast. If you got something out of this interview, would you share this episode on social media? If you know someone that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show and include the hashtag people strategy leaders. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content. To make sure you don't miss any episodes, go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up, ratings, and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more? Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter at Sri Chalapa. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time. And thank you to Patrick Ramsey, sound engineer at Kalinga Production Studios for recording and mixing this show.